is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This, this is Just for Kicks. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Now, your hosts, Judy Trammell, Haley Anderson, and Kelly Fenglass. Welcome to Just for Kicks. This is our pilot. This is exciting. First time ever show. Um, I don't think any one of us know what we're doing, so that's a good <laughs> thing. We're going to have fun. Um, and I think we're going to, we created this show. It kind of is what we talk about in the locker room, the girls' locker room. This is going to be kind of girl talk, but men might just want to listen in and hear what we have to say. We're going to be talking lifestyle. We're going to be talking entertainment, television, of course, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. We may tiptoe into sports if we know what we're talking about or we have the right guests. But basically anything in the news or any anything on the tops of our heads, that's what we hope to talk about. So I'm Kelly, Judy Trammell, and Haley Anderson. Yes. A plaza, plaza, just have plaza, 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 yes. <laughs> So we all kind of uh, we all come from three different places in life, and we are three different um, ages. We're just going to be upfront about that. So we're going to kind of have some fun with that too. And Haley is going to be our first topic that we want to talk about. She's going to be our road warrior. One of Haley's features is going to be keeping up with the Joneses. So um, Haley is the only one of this three that went to the Super Bowl recently, and we have been dying to hear from Haley, who, not necessarily who won the football game. We all know that, but we want to know who she saw, what they were wearing, what parties did she go to, all that kind of stuff the girls want to hear about. So Haley, tell us Tell us, first of all, kind of when you landed, what, what was the energy like? What was the first thing and the biggest thing you remember when you got there on day one? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we were all excited when we got there. And, of course, we wish we were in it. But we were happy for the Chiefs and their winning. Just their family is from Dallas. And it was kind of cool to see them after 50 years finally get the Super Bowl back in Kansas City. So congrats to them. Um, so we arrived Thursday and everyone was kind of all excited, didn't know where to start or begin. So we had dinner at Prime 112, which is a really nice steakhouse there and Everyone who's anybody is always there. So we ran into the Manning brothers, Cam Newton. List goes on and on. Everyone excited for the weekend to begin. Um, and when you say we have dinner, how many are in we and how how's that? Right, that's there. a big group. It's a, it's a big group. We ended up have I mean, nine grandkids all there. Oh boy. So, I mean, we had 18 at our dinner table each night. So everyone, even more than that, because everyone bought their, brought their spouses with them. So, I mean, you had up to 20 people, family, friends. And who picks up the tab? Grandfather picks up the tab on that one. <laughs> okay, I stay out of enough. that one. <laughs> Good. I definitely enough. stay out of that one. But no, it was um, a great weekend, and we started off with Friday night. We went to Shaq's um, party, and so after everyone was kind of in talks on if he was going to have the party after Kobe's passing that week before, and he came out and decided that all the proceeds to the party went to the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Foundation, as well awesome. as the family that were affected mm -hmm. in the in the helicopter crash. So that's great. That was awesome, and just hearing about that, and then you got to the party and they had tributes all in between entertainers. So we were a mess. I, I mean, there was emotion. Just bet. This, you're all having emotions. Fun, we're having fun, but then we're in tears because just seeing all the great things Kobe did and how that he impacted so many people that he didn't know. Even back in L.A., like you see them going up to their Mamba basketball facility where his girls grew up playing in the um, Staples Center and their practice center, just bringing jerseys and bringing flowers. It just definitely hit out home for people that he probably didn't even know he touched just growing up in his career. So being able to be there and see the tributes throughout the whole entire weekend, not right. just at Shaq's party. Mm -hmm. I noticed, I mean, the just you could see the color. You could see, obviously, Chiefs color, and you could see 49ers, but there was mm -hmm. so much was Lakers gear as well, huh? It was it was shocking for me. Like, I know he's been such a huge role model for everyone, especially going into a football game. I didn't expect to see basketball jerseys, but if it wasn't a 49ers or a Chiefs, it was a Kobe Bryant jersey. And going into Saturday's Fanatics party, um, Shaq was also there. And they did a Bryant Kobe Bryant tribute and handed out Kobe Bryant jerseys to everybody in the crowd. Oh, so everyone cool. there was supporting their 24, either purple or yellow jersey, which was fun to kind of see everyone. And after every event, everyone was chanting Kobe. 
and it was just emotional for me. I'm going to get emotional now, but it was just emotional for me just to see it doesn't matter if it's hockey or football. It just doesn't matter what sport it was that he was able to con- contribute and be a huge just role model for people in football and other sports. And kind of what a blessing to have the world's athletes together on one, one place and see this yeah. as a reminder of how impactful and inspirational they really can be Yes, um, with their platform. So after that, what, what what was next? Yeah, so going back into the parties, well, Fanatics was on Saturday, and they had Chainsmokers and Migos and then ended with Post Malone. Wow. So everyone, okay. that was kind of a fun atmosphere. They had people there from Jay-Z to Mark Cuban to Emily Ratajkowski, uh, Robin Thicke. Like everyone who was somebody was always at one of those parties. Um, Did pi- you take pictures with them? Are you a, hey, can I get a picture with you kind of person? I usually am. I Sometimes I am depending on the person. Yeah. And, or just depending on kind of like the situation we were in. But Post Malone afterwards was great. He I'm invited sure. us up, said hi to everybody. There's actually, we have a video of him. He's a huge Cowboys fan. He's, right. His dad worked here. So he pretty much grew up a Cowboys fan. And halfway through, we had handed him a Dallas Cowboys baseball cap. And he put it on. And then someone else kind of hopped like offered him a Chiefs hat and he kind of looked at it and like put it on, but then put the Cowboys hat on top, top just <laughs> to show how great true of a Cowboys fan. So it was a fun moment just to see. And it, I was surrounded by my whole, like all the cousins and my brothers, we were there watching him perform. So it was kind of just to see how, even though it was a Chiefs Super Bowl, how many Cowboy fans are mm-hmm. just out there and around. Did you see, um, w- w- was anybody that you were like starstruck where you were like, oh my gosh, this is my dream person to see or, rub shoulders with um that's a good question i saw i mean robin thick is also a good one kevin hart yeah. and i think oh. after his accident that he had yes he he also did a tribute to kobe before post went on and um that was kind of just a nice thing to see just knowing how he was in a, his accident and came back from that was nice to yeah where are you this. and kevin hart on the height scale would you both get on the rides at disney disney world I I think we'll, we're about the same height. Yeah. So okay. just passing. Okay. But no, it's great seeing it's great and funny seeing him next to Shaq. And we I actually bet that was. It oh was funny. Goodness. And then even last year, going back to last year's Super Bowl, um, the little gymnast um, Simone Biles came up and started talking to him, and he's sitting down, and he's still a whole head foot taller than she is sitting down. Wow. And okay. it was just it's funny just to see how like the spectrum of athletes, the different sizes and heights, and what they're good at, and just seeing beside like stand next to each other and bond over that. It was fun. So in the game, now you're in, I assume, kind of a, a suite. Yes. You have a, a bird's eye view. We were watching from different houses on television, which probably has a, a greater view sometimes than sometimes. what you're seeing live. Mm-hmm. Um, I want I do want to hear about halftime, but the pregame was impressive too. Were y'all not like, I was so proud of Demi Lovato. I was, I think I was, Pulling for her as much as I was pulling for Pat Me Mahomes too. I in was. this game. And after seeing her in the Grammys and her emotional performance she yeah. had and where she's been the past couple of months to a year, it's just touching just to see her go out and she nailed it. I was like, I don't think you, at this point in stage you could find anyone that we haven't had in the past do as great as she did. I know. Right. She did a anthem for us once for Thanksgiving. It was, and she was a yeah, it was back when Jonas yeah, Brothers did our halftime show. And it was in the great old stadium. Then. And mm-hmm. I cheered with her mom. Yeah, that's so awesome. So it's, it's a fun and to Demi's see that full mother, circle. Um, Diana. Diana was a cheerleader, a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader mm-hmm. with Judy. She was. She was in my group. Isn't that's that crazy. Something? Such a small world. But it I was is. proud for her, and I, I I send her positive vibes. I hope I hope this is, is a, yes. her good place. I watched a really good interview about her, and she kind of has taken on um, – they asked what's different in her life, and she mentioned that she – was finally going to church for the first time in her life. And I don't know. She, just, I just thought she was great. So anyway, on to halftime. Oh, yes. What say you? And, and y'all don't, don't filter. What did you really think? And I'll go first or last. Judy? Okay. What did I really think? As a dancer and doing halftimes for our Thanksgiving, I loved the production, mm-hmm. the lights, mm-hmm. the stage, the way they made that stage look three-dimensional. Yes. I loved cool. seeing was... all the dancers and the costume changes. Non-filtered. I thought everything was great. I didn't love the poll, but I was so impressed with Jennifer's 
athletic ability to be able to get through that. That halftime was hard to get through. That was a hard one. She yeah. really, I don't want to ever say for someone's age, but she's 50 and she was killing, killing it. it. Yeah. That was, that was good to see. I thought, um, I agree with you. I thought the dancing, the production, the lights, because we mm-hmm. all have been around been, that. Yes. Mm-hmm. We can appreciate how much work, money, effort, power, all of that goes into it. Shakira blew me away. She, she was, was hot. She, she was, was great. She was great. She looked amazing. I, mm-hmm. I know that there's the cultural thing. I wasn't big on the her tongue at the camera scene. That right. wasn't big for me. Um, J-Lo, I love but she was starting to get a little gimmicky for me. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the polls at all. I it just it was like, okay, she's going to sing with her daughter and have a mom moment on stage while at the same time hang upside down mm-hmm. on a pole. That was a little bit of a juxtaposition for me. It was. But outside yeah. of that, yes, I cheer her for the energy. But the show, the production was amazing. Um, I, can't, I think it would have been even cooler if it had been Pitbull who had joined them. Right, and you he, know. what's funny is, he was at, he did the tailgate, and then he also was Shax, and he had his own party. So he was around doing his own gigs. And going back to Shax's party, he was one of my favorite. He just oh, got I'm the sure. crowd going, and it was just a fun yeah. atmosphere when he performed, and the rest were like Diddy and Diplo. But like, he was all over the map being Mr. 305. He, mm-hmm. yes. I was actually thinking he'd show up on stage st- st- too. That'd be a fun surprise. So, from your perspective, because we got all the close up shots, and you may not yeah. have yeah. seen the close ups. The close ups of. Close shots, yes. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yes, yes. She, she <laughs> said it. I said it. I said um, it. But from 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 the live view, was it amazing in terms of production? So it really was. We were up a little bit higher, so it was kind of hard to see the it, like bits and pieces of it. But our TV was delayed, so I was able to watch and then kind of look back and forth to see mm-hmm. what you guys were seeing versus what I was seeing. I didn't realize it was her daughter. Until later on, I was like, who yeah. is that? And then she comes I out. I will say it was a lot going on because I know there was controversy about Maroon's five performances last year mm-hmm. and him taking his shirt off and him using cut, like just the cuss words in the shirt. And then you fast forward to this year and there's being a poll, which no one really expected to have a poll. I mean, she did make it look tasteful, but it definitely caught a lot of people <laughs> off guard. <laughs> if I had, OK, tasteful. OK. It's been a topic. It's it definitely been a topic. Um, but the fact that she but the fact that everybody's looks talking that about good. it, they you know they they definitely got noticed. And I was listening to Corby mm-hmm. Davidson on the ticket talk about the ratings, and now I'm going to say the ratings wrong. But the halftime out of the millions of eyeballs on the game, the halftime even had one more million. I mean, it's it, all it's the guys so watching. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of. <clears throat> I mean, sometimes people. At least guys, I've watched one of those videos, and they were, like, showing some of the game, and then they showed the guys right after the halftime performance, and they all went nuts. And it's just seeing something different. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you're sitting here, and J-Lo's 50, and Shakira's mid-40s, and you're just like, okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to have the courage to go out there mm-hmm. and do it and own it, it was, I thought it was great. I loved all the dancers. I, I did, too. That was a great moment for them. Except there was one moment where she was upside down on her pole and she was coming down almost like in a grand plie or something. And she could have been at my doctor's office in the position she was in. <laughs> but, the, the, but camera she had, yeah, the, the camera angles. And, and, yeah. And she was just about to crush these dancers shoulders below her. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I, I'm sure that was not easy. Right. And then when An Shakira did the crowd surfing, I, th- I got really oh, yeah. nervous, but then I realized it was her dancers that were actually moving her through. Oh, I didn't it was know. really yeah. brilliant how they did that to where there wasn't any danger in it. Mm-hmm. Did either of y'all notice Shakira's boots? I know everybody else was looking at everything else besides I was looking footwear, at her arms and her but her abs. boots were cool. They were red and burgundy beaded. They were fabulous. I didn't. And her tail feathers that were removable. I, I love that. Uh, okay, so then, the, okay, so players, football. Okay, I love Pat Mahomes. He's from East Texas. I'm going to always shout out for East Texas. He's from White House. It's 30 minutes away from Lindell, my hometown. But does he does he not have the prettiest skin you've ever seen in your life yes. on TV? And how powerful is he? I was so excited for them. I was happy for him. I know we have shots of me jumping up and down and screaming when they got touchdowns and I think just being a Texas guy and they're not really being a high school football guy or college from Texas winning the Super Bowl. So I think it's just for him to be so young 
and go in after his what, second year to win Super Bowl is awesome. He played football in White House High School and the, and baseball, and then he played football at Tech. Texas Tech. And now, now here, what what is he third his third year, and he's Super Bowl mm-hmm. MVP. Incredible. It's my quarterback. Yeah. Only hearing great things. Yeah. My homie. Um, did we have any? Is anyone laughing at my broken glasses just sitting? <laughs> Okay, so this is real life. Besides the fact that Judy and I have, we steal each other's glasses every second. What happened? I don't know. Well, I would lend I've you I've got mine. ten more pair in my purse. Here, it's okay. No. Do, are there any Twitter questions about oh, Super Bowl? Oh, you were about to go there, and my glasses are broken. So, yeah. Haley, you came home from the Super Bowl, I'm sure probably tired. Did you see? Was there anything, like, new at parties, new tricks, props? Nothing really new. I think... There's definitely a difference depending on the location you're at. Right. A lot of them last year were concerts. And then we noticed for concerts, we kind of want to go more towards the actual, like, party scene versus being a venue up high. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to be more, like, in the crowd and a part of everything. It did rain. Yeah. So hard Friday and Saturday. To the fact that we, um, where we were staying, there was, they built a temporary kind of like a shed warehouse for DirecTV and Pepsi's event on um, Friday, and it flooded on Friday night. Ouch. And so they had to evacuate the Lizzo concert for Friday. And so everyone left there, and, of course, I'm running in my six-inch heels from the car to Shaq's party just drenched. I was like, this is not what we had planned. But then come Saturday or Sunday, Monday, it was sunny and 75. So did Lizzo get canceled? They, yes, they got. Oh. Well, they they she probably had some songs, but then they had to mm-hmm. evacuate due to the flooding. Yeah, she's I she's would love fun. To see her. Yes, she's cool. Fun's I saw a good her. She has seems love fun at the Grammys. She was awesome at the Grammys, and I actually she did a concert here in Dallas, and it was at a smaller venue because it was booked before she got big, and it, I mean it was sold out. And just to see her just grow and just be who she is, I mean mm-hmm. she's big girl she's making her way she's comfortable with her body just to see her and how she reacts and how she's gotten big and just, i feel like it's a good image for other women and girls just to be happy with who they are look at her rolling stone cover if have you seen it seen it's, it's, it's gorgeous it's really artistic it's nothing like rolling stone has ever done before and you're right she just she owns mm-hmm. it and i did not know i should have but i didn't know she was a flute player until i saw her play her oh, flute yes. Grammys, and she she's, she she's bring, a, yeah. i almost great. called you i mean we were tweeting back and forth but, or <laughs> texting, texting yes but i almost called yeah. you and said she's on her flute yeah and she can play it she yep. can play she's really good so okay so super bowl i guess that let's see I think, um, okay, you saw Paul Rudd. Any, any Oscar-nominated peeps that you saw that were going to be? Did you see Bradley Cooper? I didn't, but I really like Bradley Cooper. We all do. <laughs> I did see Steve Harvey, and I bumped into him at the tailgate, and that's one of my friends, because I love watching Family Feud. So when I saw him, I'm like, this is one I want to take a picture with. Uh, oh, and he, Shaquille was, Shaquille he was great at the up. honors. Did you see him in the NFL honors he hosted? No, I didn't. Hysterical. Hysterical. He's redeemed himself from his one little catastrophe oh, yes. on the his Miss. Faux pas. Uh, and, yeah. Was it the Miss USA pageant? Miss, Miss Universe. Universe. Miss Universe. I think so. I think mm-hmm. he called one the wrong of those. Country. He called the wrong girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we all we all make, make mistakes. mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't we? And this show might be a mistake. Who knows? But we'll find out. <laughs> We're going to go to break right now. We'll be back. The Cowboys Way, where Thanksgiving means spending the day with 100,000 of your closest family and friends to watch the game live. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships show us what success looks like. Where we're all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans have the power to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America. Copyright 2019, Bank of America Corporation. So, you're shopping, and that's when you see it. Aisle 23. Dr. Pepper stacked from top to bottom as far as the eye can see. The phrase too good to be true comes to mind, yet there it is. A rich, delicious Dr. Pepper paradise. Wait, did did that can of Dr. Pepper just open itself for you? They all are. As if to say, so nice to treat you. And even though it feels weird to talk to a can, you pick one up and say, it's so nice to be treated. Dr. Pepper. 
So nice to treat you. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score September 2019. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson Hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today in the Stadium Pro Shop or at Stetson.com. Back, back, back to Just for Kicks. We're back. We are back. And look, we have Woo-hoo! a sidekick now. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Give it up for Amy, fifth-year Amy, recently returning from our Pro Bowl. Yes. And while you were having fun at the Pro Bowl, we were at home, so we wanted you to tell us everything about the Pro Bowl and tell us tell us about your experiences. For those of you that don't realize, our um, all of the teams, 26 of the 32 teams, mm-hmm. have cheerleaders and sent a, one representative to the Pro Bowl. And Amy selection process, and this is unique to each team, but our selection process is that all of the cheerleaders, her peers, her teammates – Um, elected her and then our staff also kind of weighs in and confirms if you will and then Amy was unanimously chosen as this year's Pro Bowl representative so congratulations thank you and thank you guys so much for the opportunity it was the best week ever and it's crazy because Kashara is my best friend and she went two years ago and I got to talk to Lacey a ton before I went and it's so funny because you can't really describe it and they always said that And I didn't really believe them. I was like, okay, you can give me a little more of like what's going to happen. And you really can't. It's it's the most magical week. And it's crazy that 26 women who have never met each other can be so close after just a week. And I feel like I've known them all my entire life. And I got really close with the Panther cheerleader, Anna, and which is funny because she lives in Charlotte and that's where I'm from. And I felt like I have known her my entire life. And it's crazy because we were together for seven days. So. Were, y'all, were y'all roommates? No, we weren't. And she was one of the first people I saw in the airport. So we took the shuttle back to the hotel and we sat next to each other. And that was the first time I'd ever talked to her. And we shared goldfish. And <laughs> from then on, we were best friends. That's the same reaction that every girl we've sent to the Pro Bowl has come back with is how close y'all yeah. get in seven days. And y'all always have a lunch or a dinner. Yeah. The, the former Pro Bowl girls mm-hmm. from Dallas. I think that's really special that y'all still get together and do that, and they add one on every year. Yes, it's so sweet. Shelly Bramhall always puts it on, and it's really cool to be able to see all of the past Pro Bowl girls and hear all their experiences and hear how the Arizona trip went, how some of them were in Hawaii and Orlando, and just comparing all the different stories, but everyone kind of getting the ultimate result of being still such good best friends with the girls that they went with. Shelly's still bitter because when she was picked as a Pro Bowl cheerleader (laughs) I was still in the height of my um, chaperone and disciplinarian <laughs> phase. She and still talks about this. She was married and she was going to Hawaii and she had a chaperone <laughs> that went with her to the Pro Bowl. Now, we, um, now that's part of being selected as a Pro Bowl representative is someone that we know can go without a chaperone. So... You you didn't have a shadow with you. So tell us about it. Like, I know you had a really busy week, and I know you had a lot of choreography you had to learn because it was a performance and a game, first and foremost. But tell us about the week. So the first thing you do when you get there, you kind of have the day off because everyone's flights come in at different times. Like, my roommate was one of the very last flights, so I was so anxious to meet her. I ran with Melissa, who was the Chargers girl, and she was amazing. We were were still talking all the time, and we were really close the entire week. So it was a match made in heaven. We were really lucky that we were 
together. So you're kind of chilling all week, kind of, or all day, trying to figure out where everyone is, trying to meet everyone. And you've been talking to these girls for like three weeks. So you try and like study their pictures so you know who they are when you meet them. So I was like looking at their little profile pictures and trying to make sure I knew everyone's name. So you kind of meet everyone. And then that night we had a team meeting and a mm-hmm. dinner. And I guess usually the second day before squad photo is when they did this entire like probable history meeting. And I guess usually girls wanted to touch up. And so they changed that to the first night, which was really nice because they didn't have to rush through it or anything. So it was really cool hearing about the history of Pro Bowl and all of that. And the directors and everyone who was helping with it, they've been there for years and years and years. And so it was really cool that they've gone to experience every single what one. What was the first year of the Pro Bowl? When the cheerleaders were sent. I, I think it was Shelly. Was no. Our f- I'm the 28th, so take back 28 years. Tandor you, Dory. You don't mean the Pro Bowl game itself. You no. Mean when we started, when sending, we started cheerleaders. Sending, sending cheerleaders. I don't know why Dory, out of the blue. Dory went for sure. Um, they didn't it's have them in our days. Yeah, they didn't have it when we cheered. We, of course, would have been the first ones there. <laughs> Ah, without it. a chaperone. Um, <laughs> so, but did, and y'all rehearsed. How, how would you? How do you bring twenty six girls together that have never rehearsed and all of a sudden throw together a show? So the rehearsal. Oh my gosh. Okay. So the second day, you did the squad photo. You're on cloud nine because you just took a squad photo, and you know it's going to be in history forever. And fun fact that I was mind blown about: the rocks that are behind the squad photo. I'm sorry if I'm like breaking the news here but they're not it, real are they they don't look um, real. They don't look, okay. you guys it's um a hotel pool plaster yeah and it's next to a hotel pool it's what it looks like <laughs> <laughs> so you like walk out and you're like oh my gosh the rocks and then you look and it's just like a hotel pool <laughs> <laughs> and a slide that's going in and out, out of the rock and yeah. they just angle it perfectly so you can't tell do you think it's this like magical mountain like in orlando or something like crazy and yeah it's a hotel pool so that and was that was crates. pretty funny. I, yeah, I saw an unretouched photo and right. it was on apple crates. But you know what? That's probably true in a lot yeah, of pictures I was on a crate. <laughs> and a lot of film. You looked great, by the Thank way. Thank you. Sure. It was freezing. I think it wind chill was like thirty degrees. Really? Yeah. So we had our jackets on the entire time, and then right before the picture, we would take them off. And then when we, they were waiting for sun again, we'd put them back on. And then they had towels, and then we'd take them off. So it was freezing, but we were all so excited to be there. It didn't really matter. Like, no one was complaining. Everyone was. How long did the one single photo image take you guys to It to? didn't take that long. It didn't take as long as our squad photo does. So it, I think it was. <laughs> <No offense. laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say more than an hour. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, but some girls, like the Atlanta Falcons cheerleader, was on a straight up ledge, like halfway up the rock. And I was like, she hasn't complained once. She is just chilling up there. And she was in my line. Her name's Sydney, and she's awesome. But yeah, I was like, wow, she is standing on a ledge for like an hour in the cold. <laughs> but she looked great. Oh, but lunch. after the squad photo, you get a quick lunch, and then the rehearsal starts. And we all kept saying, like joking, that no Pro Bowl cheerleader warned us for this rehearsal. It is a seven-hour rehearsal. Oh, really? It's oh inside a ballroom. It's outside. It's yes, inside a ballroom. Inside a ballroom. And so no mirrors. And you're all just kind of – and it's a weird vibe at first when you don't get to know everyone right away uh-huh. because it's a room full of leaders on right. cheer team. So no one wants to overstep. No one wants to be like, I'm going to stand front center. Like, I know all the dances. And but, y'all learned them. From we learned them on videos, videos. yeah, so prior. So we had we ended up with nine sidelines and then our pregame and then three fillers, which are like, they're probably like 40-second mm-hmm. little dances. So it was a lot of material. And the first thing, Diane, the choreographer, she was like, okay, I'm just going to turn on the music and we're just going to run all of them. Yeah. And we were like, oh, okay. She probably wants to see who's steady. I know. I'm like, wait, we're going to like count through first. <laughs> and so we ran all the dances Back to back, even pregame. And then they were waiting for we'll Jackie Bob. Builder. Yeah, it really was. They were waiting for Jackie Bob and some of the other people in charge to come to give us our lines because, Maria, they like to look at the heights. And it's all done by height. So if you're in, it's AFC and NFC, obviously. And then it's the ones are usually the shorter girls and then the twos are the tallies. So like Lacey and I have, we're both NFC two and Kashera was NFC one. So it all just kind of like depends on height. And so I was NFC two and they line you up just based off of height. And then they kind of just like rearrange hair color and they look at uniform color 
And it's so funny because so many girls have like 10, 12 uniforms. Mm -hmm. So they're like, well, which one are you going to wear mostly? What are the colors? And I was like, mine's white and blue. (laughs) (laughs) I don't change. (laughs) So I was going to say that. That was really nice, actually, not ever having to panic about which one. Like all the girls were texting their directors and they were like, which uniform do you want me to wear for this? Which uniform do you want me to wear for this? And I was like... I think Kelly knows she's going to want me to wear this one. Uh, that would be the game day uniform, <laughs> which is why we have assigned rehearsal apparel because we remember all the back and forth. What do we wear tonight? What do we wear tomorrow Yes, night? because you made a mistake once. <laughs> <laughs> Calling her out. 1984. <clears throat> she wore the wrong short set. Oh. Yeah, Oops, and I got pulled okay. out of the Mary Lou Retton halftime, but I'm not bitter. Okay, so rehearsed, <laughs> and then what? So then you, they put appearances. you in your groups, yep, and then you just rehearse all the dances in your groups. And the craziest thing was, because all the cheerleaders are very similar. We all kind of go through the same thing. We love practicing. We love being prepared. And the craziest thing for all of us was they would never tell us what dance we were going to do until right before. So we would be doing— At rehearsal? Or at, like, a show. Oh, really? So, yeah, so they do huh. they do a great job of kind of getting us in Pro Bowl and marketing us around, like, the entire week instead of just having us there for the game. Mm-hmm. So we're doing – they have a huge flag football event mm-hmm. for the youth, and so we do – we're there all day and we're in shifts, and so that was really fun. But, yeah, we perform dances, and they're like, okay, you're going to do this dance, and they're like, we're going to play it in a minute. And you're like, okay, we're going to do that dance. And they're always like, you should know all of them. Which is true, you should, but it, that was kind of that was kind of new for a lot of us because we were like, well, I guess we'll just rehearse all of them for the next. You hour. like to be more prepared, <laughs> yes. yeah. and we knew which ones were on game day, obviously. But there was one dance where they switched the song like a bunch of times, so we had one of the dances to three different songs, so that was tricky. How were the fans? Was there was there was there were there more Cowboys fans, or was it? Kind of no. There, the- there were a ton of Cowboys fans, yeah. and that was probably the most magical part was knowing that you were the one they were looking to as the representative for the cheerleaders, uh-huh. and that was kind of the most special feeling. Looking out in game day and all of the fans being yelling Cowboys, Cowboys, and so I would get to yell Go Cowboys. And what was really special is I know our show gives us so so much publicity, and mm-hmm. what was. Really, really cool is a lot of the fans knew my name. So a lot of them would yell, Amy, Amy. And all the girls in my line were like, how does everyone know your name? (laughs) And I'm like, it's our TV show. (laughs) So as much stress as the TV show can be, sometimes it honestly, it was really special that I felt like I had a connection with all these fans because they had seen me on the show. And especially we performed at Disney Springs and the mob that came towards me and all these little kids that were like, you're my favorite. I can't wait to take a picture with you. I have to get a picture. And that it was just, it was really, really magical and special to have kind of a more connection, not a better connection than the other chillers, but just it felt a little deeper because they felt like they knew me. So that yes. was, it was really sweet. Well, yeah, speak, there were lots of Cowboys fans. Speaking of sweet, because now I've got, I've got the Amy, the five-year Amy folder. <laughs> it is, it's a big one. It is, I know, it's Amy's <laughs> fifth year and... She hasn't formally been asked to make her decision, but we might, we might can find out here on um, Just for Kicks pilot premiere. <laughs> Amy, I want, this is your application, your rookie year. Mm. Here you are, little Amy uh, from Charlotte. Fun, fun, fun fact, yeah. my uh, best friend took that outside of her house with her fancy camera. Yes. <laughs> because I didn't have any updated photos. But wait, just in case Amy thinks we didn't notice her, she sent us... <laughs> A swimsuit in heels. Okay, wait. Photo. Fun fact about this: I actually did not send that. So Shelly McCaslin sent that through Sarah, and I sent it to y'all. Oh, and I remember you it, had it open during my interview, and the whole time I was like, "How did they get that picture of me?" <laughs> like so stressed. We have you thought we, we were going to ask you about the picture. Well, yeah, I was just like, "Where is that photo from?" <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, I think it was on my Instagram." But so you were 21 when you applied. Yes. Amy oh, baby from Charlotte, Amy. Carolina. Baby. Here's the question. Single um, Amy. Wait, out of business. Stand by. There was a question about why you... Um, the question was, please define your goal of being a DCC. Your answer was, as a DCC, I hope to overall become a better version of the person I am today through allowing myself to grow emotionally, physically, mentally, and as a young woman, inspiring others through such a prestigious organization as the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm going to put a big check mark and say, job well done. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't that something that's, that's awesome? So, Amy, what's, what's, um, what's next on your bucket list? Well, I... Because you weren't married when you I know. were a cheer And I said out. that at the last game when I was talking to the team and just kind of thanking them for everything. And I was like, I started as a single woman... That was a dance teacher, and I'm leaving as a married woman with a business. So a lot has happened in five years, and I'm thrilled to kind of dive into my business and see it grow. I've been super blessed, and we have around 350 students, and so I'm super blessed with where we're at now, but I know Eminence has the potential to grow and grow and grow. And so I'm really excited to do that. And I always say that if I wasn't my own boss, I'd be fired by now because I have subs all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm excited to kind of spend time with my kids and see them grow. My kids at my studio, I always say kids. I do not have kids. My kids at my dance studio. And just seeing them grow into the dancers I know they can become. And I've thought about doing a few auditions in New York just for fun with my friends because um, half of my graduating class lives in New York City and two of my bridesmaids live in New York City so I would love to just kind of attend some auditions with them just as a bucket list to say I did it um, because my school is really geared towards New York City Mm -hmm. so I would love to just kind of say that I did it and go for it and so I might do some of those. for everybody that doesn't know about your degree tell us a little bit about where you went to school and what you studied. So I went to Oklahoma City University and I was a dance performance major and they have three dance majors kind of dance majors there it's dance pedagogy dance biz or dance management and dance performance. So I was a dance performance major, but you take classes in everything. Now it's pretty funny that I was a performance major and because I own a business, I'm like, maybe that management degree would have been great. But we did take some business classes. So that's really nice that they keep everyone really well-rounded there. But it is a very heavy musical theater school and our shows are very geared towards Broadway and all of that. So there are tons of OCU alumni and OCU stars in New York City. And there were a ton at Disney World that came and saw me. So that was really, really sweet. Yeah. So some of my OCU stars came and saw our Great. show at Disney Springs. Yeah. So that was really special. Um, so yeah, I would love to just say that I did it and not regret anything. Because um, I know some people who went to OCU, they do regret that they never got to do those auditions. So I don't want to be one of those people. And I love my students and I'll always be there for them. But I think it'd be fun just to kind of one last bucket list, just try a couple out there and see what happens. Harry, I don't know. I was going to say, what does Harry think about that? And your 300 kids back in Eminence. Harry's so supportive. He was like, just watch, you're going to get it. And then you're going to be gone for another five years. (laughs) You're going to have to get subs again. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, I just have to do it. But he understands. And he, he performed all over the world and he's done everything so he's the best support system and kind of letting me take my moment now so he understands but yeah I, I'm not seeing anything that's going to be permanent in New York City maybe just a few things here and there but yeah that's kind of on the plan we'll see I might take like a year off just with the studio and then this might be a future endeavor Sounds fun it does sounds a blast where in New York, like if you wanted, what's your like opportunity to try out? Like what's your fantasy there? Um, well, a ton of my friends do the Rock Hat audition. Rock Hats is, <laughs> OCU is like the breeding ground for Rock Hats. So I think there's over like 95 Rock Hats that have come from our school and our program. Oh. So I would love to just do that. It's a pretty political program. So you kind of need to do their summer intensives. And it's kind of a process before you get. And JC knows all of this. So I've talked to her some about it. And you're tall, you're tall enough? I am tall enough now. They changed it. <laughs> they did? Yes. I oh, thought wow. you had to be five. You have to be five seven. six. Oh. Six? They changed really? it to five six. And I'm five six I and three quarters. Be. There you go. So. You pass. I pass. Huh. Character heels, I'm even taller. Well, stand tall, Amy. <laughs> yes. I have a long torso, so that makes me seem taller. <laughs> yeah, so that might be the first one that I kind of want to go to because I know for a fact my best friend goes every single year. So I would love to just kind of go with her. She can kind of teach me what to do. Well, but, yeah, because you have JC and then Olivia used to be one too. Yeah. So there's yes, two. There's long years sure. there. Yeah, so that would be a fun one just to do. And then I want to go. I want to go to a cattle call just to say I did it and go to like a huge just audition with like 500 people showing up just to say that I've done it because my friends do it every day. So I'm like, I want to just do one, just one to cross it off my list. They That's, might not even see me, but hopefully. Well, thank you for <laughs> pulling back the curtain a little bit for us yes. on the Pro Bowl. 
It and was magical. Congratulations. And thanks for joining us here today on Just for Kicks. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about my favorite, the Oscars. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today in the Stadium Pro Shop or at Stetson.com. Your new apartment's big. Such a great deal. Uh, it's okay. Just okay? What's not too... Right above the subway! Well, I bet you don't even notice it after the... That's my neighbor, Angus! A deal that's just okay is not okay. Get a great deal with America's Best Network. Come into an AT&T store to find out how to get one of our popular smartphones for $0 down. Based on GWS1 score September 2019. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. So, you're shopping. And that's when you see it. Aisle 23. Dr. Pepper stacked from top to bottom as far as the eye can see. The phrase too good to be true comes to mind, yet there it is. A rich, delicious Dr. Pepper paradise. Wait, did, did that can of Dr. Pepper just open itself for you? They all are. As if to say, so nice to treat you. And even though it feels weird to talk to a can, you pick one up and say, it's so nice to be treated. Dr. Pepper, so nice to treat you. Back, back, back to back. Just for Kicks. We're back, and it's time to talk Oscars, and our sidekick is Miss Christy Scales. Welcome, Christy. Thanks for having me. Excited um, to have you. Real quick, I know you're wondering... <laughs> what this is, so I have to tell this quick story because this is my prized possession. This is a piece of last year's red carpet from the Oscars. And yes, Rami Malek, who won Best Actor in the Bohemian Rhapsody, walked on that red carpet. But the story behind that carpet, um, I am an Oscar fanatic and was in L.A. last year, and it just happened to be Oscar week. We were there for a company retreat and when I realized it was the same week I started going on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and looking for stars of course I went to find the Queen star but when we were there I could see you weren't there was no admittance but there was they were literally rolling in the red carpet and between a hundred dollar bill and me trying to sneak backstage and talking to security guards I was desperate to get just a, just a swatch of the red carpet. And I got turned down and turned down many times, even with the $100 bill. So anyway, <laughs> I finally found one lady, and then I kind of lost my nerve. And Katie Aldrich, who was there with me, she, she helped me. We talked to a security guard, and she goes, I'd give you a piece, but I don't have a pair of scissors. And I thought, okay, that was an excuse, but I'm going to go find a pair of scissors. <laughs> So we went across the street to a little souvenir tchotchke shop, and the um, the girl at the cash register, I said, do you have a pair of scissors I can borrow? And I really couldn't believe she gave me a pair of scissors when there's, we're in the middle of Hollywood. It's the cameras and security everywhere. It's not a safe place to be if you want to cause trouble. She hands me this big pair of shears, and we go <laughs> back across the street. We flagged down the security guard, and I said, here's the scissors. And she kind of gently put them in her pocket. She walked over, and she came back, and she handed me this piece of red carpet. So, did, did, uh, awesome. did, did she keep the $100 bill? She didn't take it. Nobody she didn't took the $100 bill. Oh, okay. So so she can't get in trouble for no, being no, no. bribed for that. No? See, la last year we did an Oscar special with uh, Kelly for our Five Points Blue uh, mm -hmm. that particular week, and I had my little red carpet from the Cannes Film Festival oh, uh, fine. from – you know, the south of France, but that, that was from like way back in the year 2000. So Kelly's won up to me with the uh, <laughs> Academy Awards instead of the Cannes Film Festival. 
even more special for me because it was last yeah, year. And you know because, how with crazy Rand, I was yes. about Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, so, so here's the thing, because no. Kelly in last year with Bohemian Rhapsody and Rami Malek and all that, and then, uh, of course, with the DCC for the 2019 season and great job uh, – with the uh, queen medley of songs. So I'm just real curious as to what's going to happen if like 1917 or Jojo Rabbit wins uh, f- this year for the Academy Awards, how you're going to incorporate all of We're that not. into the choreography this year. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> Well, that's funny. We can start we're there. If, if we're starting to talk best picture, um, G- I haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, but Judy texted yeah. me, and she's not the movie enthusiast that I am yet, but she's going to be. And she texted me, and her text said, "It's it disturbed me a little bit. Disturbed? You didn't like it? I didn't I like loved seeing it. his mom. What is go. it? Is it a rabbit? I saw a little no, boy. No, the, no. The, the kid's got nominated for everything. The kid He's is great. wonderful." T- t- tell her about the premise of the movie. Oh, he has an imaginary friend. What? It's set in World War II yeah, do, in Germany, do. and the young boy is 10 years old, and he's in the Nazi youth I... program and stuff. And so his he's a little bit of an outcast, mm-hmm. and his imaginary friend, kind of like the Harvey rabbit, uh, it, it's actually Adolf Hitler. I thought but I it's a Hitler comical— character. Thing. It's and it's the premise sounds really silly or um, anti-Semitic, but actually it's just the opposite. I, of all the movies, I've seen all but one of the Best Picture nominees this year. I've not seen Ford versus Ferrari, and I'm not predicting that Jojo Rabbit will win. Um, the award for best picture. I think it's got a great shot for screenwriter because it's so clever. But um, it's actually my favorite. Of the really? ones I've seen, I'm not predicting it to win. I'm not Much saying like it's the, the best favorite. One. Was your favorite last yes, year? But it's a completely different movie from the favorite. I just thought it had the best heart. And then Scarlett Johansson plays the mother uh, of the young ten year old boy. But it's uh, kind of a, a misfit. It's it's a it's a young boy who is just totally indoctrinated in the Nazi mythology. And yet come to find out that uh, his mother is hiding a young Jewish girl upstairs in the attic. And Mm. so all of the things that he's been taught, he comes to find that real life is just the opposite of what he's been taught. And he's got a fine, good heart. And it's basically good people triumphing, triumphing over evil. And that's what it's about. I've got to see that. That's it's, it's I haven't wonderful. Seen that one or you guys will really love it's it. It's really good. I just didn't like seeing his mom die. That made me sad. Yes. That's what disturbed me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so y'all want to kick gave it, it off away for someone picture? that hasn't watched it? Let's kick it off. So, I'm going to warn y'all that I've only seen the Joker, and I was <laughs> kind of trying to catch up on previews last night, so I'd be that, ready for today. Haley gets a bye because during during film season she's running around and her her bit is keeping up with the Joneses. So while you're while you're doing that, we're watching movies. Perfect. Um, our staff, though, Christy, you'll appreciate this. I took our staff for an outing because Movie Monday is kind of what we're doing now, mm-hmm. and this is the only time we could go. So I took Haley and Kashera and Bree to the Joker because I love the Joker, and I thought Joaquin yes. Phoenix was amazing. And I took him. And they were like, I was just like, wait till you see the dance scene and wait till you see the steps and listen to this music and all this stuff. And they were so traumatized. I traumatized <laughs> our own It's dark. Grandchild. It's very dark. And I was not ready you took for them like, to see such a dark it's movie. Jo- it, I know. Okay, just, okay, it's, it's the most nominated film this year. It's nominated for 11 awards. And Joaquin Phoenix is going to win. I think he's going to win. I think he mm-hmm. will too. Mm-hmm. So are we, all, are we all picking Joaquin for best? Yes, yes, actor. yes, for sure. Okay, so there you go. Um, uh, but but as for the best picture, though, uh, best picture. do you think Joker has a chance? I think no. I think nineteen seventeen is going to get it. it. I haven't seen it, but I've heard from that it was it, one continuous scene. So I. I'm yes. Have to go 1917. I think once it's upon amazing. a time in Hollywood probably kind of should because it's so Hollywood esque. But I think 1917 will get it. For me personally, I judge my personal picks by which movies I go to the most mm-hmm. repetitively. Like I've, <laughs> like I've seen Bohemian Rhapsody now 14 times. But I have seen The Joker twice, and I'd see it again and again. I just thought it was brilliant artistry. Okay, may I, may, may I make a suggestion for the folks who are, uh, re- who are not scared of subtitles? Parasite is a wonderful movie. I agree. I've heard Parasite that. I've heard might that. be the sleeper. 
It and I think I think uh, the it is director's so creative. I think, uh, I think the nineteen seventeen director is going to win, but uh, Sam does. Uh huh. But uh, Boon Jung Kim. Anyway, he's the writer, the director mm-hmm. of Parasite, and he may not win director, but it'll win foreign film. Has a great shot for best picture, but also um, a lot of folks think that he's going to win for screenplay. He should. And it won the uh, Screenwriters uh, Guild Award. So, Mm -hmm. um, and what they what they do with the screenwriters associations you know how the you have like the directors guild awards you have mm-hmm. the screen actors guild mm-hmm. uh, what they do with the screenwriters it's similar to what they do with golden globe where you have drama and you have comedy slash musical so with the screenwriters uh parasite won for uh one and then you had um you the jojo golden rabbit one for another mm-hmm. and it won but, the golden but, but, globe for this picture but going it, back to one thing yes mm-hmm it uh, it won uh, and also foreign film, won for foreign film. Okay, let's let's stay on track here. Best director, hmm, anybody? I, I don't. I think nine, I think nineteen seventeen is going to win. Uh, Sam Mendes he did win di- the Directors Guild uh, award, but Quentin Tarantino um, you know is a favorite among there. Todd Phillips what he d- did with the Joker was amazing. Uh, just the whole look to that film. Scorsese's always a favorite, and Par- we mentioned Parasite, but I think Sam Mendes is going to take this one home. I think he will too. Um, adapted screenplay. That's where I put Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. So um, I think that it's going to win. And the difference between adapted screenplay and original screenplay. So um, that's where Jojo Rabbit. I, I also have that as well. Uh, although it would really be neat if Greta Gerwig were able to pull uh, that off. Because uh, she got snubbed On Little Women. for Little Women. Uh, there were a lot of folks who thought that a female director should have been nominated this year. And uh, they thought, well, it's too bad that she didn't get it, but maybe she for director, but she might uh, have a good shot at screenplay. But Jojo Rabbit was so clever. It was and, clever. Yeah, yeah, it was really neat, really neat. So original screenplay is something that wasn't adapted from a book or another work. It's written for the film. Mm-hmm. And if y'all have, you guys have not seen Parasite yet, right? No, no. So if you watch it, you'll see it is so quirky clever about a korean family i I can't even describe it i don't want to describe it because it has a twist and turn Mm -hmm. every second but because it's so original i give it best screenplay um let's get into the people so best actor um did we all say joaquin phoenix yes yes okay and now i thought leonardo dicaprio in oh he was fantastic was Awesome he was too. he was amazing. I kind of want to give a and, and tie I, there. And I didn't see uh, Antonio Banderas of everyone on that list. I did not get to see him in Pain and Glory, but he has received so much international acclaim. And I think that a lot of people think of him as a Puss in Boots or, oh, yes. you know, just the one that mm-hmm. does. Oh, he does some of the. Pedro Almodovar, he was in Evita with Madonna, but mm-hmm. um, he's done so many of the films with this particular director, and uh, I wouldn't be, uh, it would be an upset, but uh, he'd probably come in second place, I think, among all of this, but this is Joaquin Phoenix's uh, yeah. category to lose. And I can't wait for his speech. Oh, man. <laughs> Every one of his speeches have been interesting, and they've all had some um, epic points to be made. Okay, so supporting actor, we've got Tom Hanks, Anthony Hopkins, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and Brad Pitt for supporting actor. Who are you going with? Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Only because, Brad Pitt. only because I love Brad Pitt. And yeah. he was great. He was amazing, amazing. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. he was just brilliant. If y'all mm-hmm. haven't, have you seen Hollywood? I have not. Time? I've heard but mixed I, reviews, so I've been hesitant to watch it. It's long. It's, um, it's very, it shows all these epic scenes of Hollywood it it's Quentin Tarantino it's weird it's long it's weird mm-hmm. but Brad Pitt and Leonardo are are they're my favorite they're, yeah. they're great their characters it, are kind of has been 
Western stars, wouldn't you say, Christy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Western film stars? Yes. Uh, Brad Pitt is the stunt double to Leonardo DiCaprio's character. And so if you like old Hollywood type of stuff, basically this is a Quentin Tarantino's homage to old Hollywood. Uh, and it's, it's different, uh, but I think it's wonderful. And, uh, yeah, I think Brad Pitt is going to, to win this for sure. Best Actress is Renee Zellweger in uh, Judy, Charlize Theron in Bombshell, um, Little Women. I'm not, I can't pronounce all these names. Scarlett <laughs> Johansson oh, in The Marriage Story. She is so, she is so amazing. You did watch I Marriage watched Story? The, well, I watched the preview. Of course, I'm going off my previews. <laughs> she and did the clip. Trailers. You know, I did the short clip, so I'm like, I see the summary to know what I'm talking about. But, but anyone, who's married, then, anyone who's married needs to see Marriage absolutely. Story because it is just, I think you described it as a gut punch, right? Yeah, it punched me in the gut. Yes, and uh, just how things just spiraled kind of out of control and they decide they're going to end their marriage, but they're going to keep it civil for the sake of the son and shared custody and then the lawyers get involved and they just kind of lose their way. And, um, you know, it's very sad along the way. But towards the end, you, there's some, you know, redemption. And, okay, I think it's it, – they don't get back together. But it's like, okay, it's going to work out. But it's so well written and just and wonderful Driver performances. He's he's amazing. nominated for male actor, too. I don't think he – can beat Joaquin, but he's great. He is so great he's in this. Get and Scarlett Johansson for Best Actress, and then she's Supporting Actress in J Jojo Rabbit, which we'll she's, get to in just a second. But she's amazing. Uh, she, when you mm -hmm. see her as a wife, just kind of losing it, you know, having one mm -hmm. many of those I'm losing it moments. Uh -huh. She's mm -hmm. so good at yes. that. My, f um, I'm going with um, Renee though in Judy. Yes. Me too, and I haven't seen it. And I've, I haven't for the seen past it. two weeks. I've looked because I want to see it in a theater. Yeah, well, of and, course. And uh, she does the she does her own singing in it. Her, so yeah, right. she doesn't just uh, what lip sync to Judy Garland. It's it's actually mm -hmm. uh, Renee Zellweger singing those She's songs. Great. So. She crosses all the ages um, of Judy's life as well as the singing. We've got to we've got to move on. But my favorite it was supporting actress Laura Dern in the Marriage yes. Story. Wow. Yes. She's I put this, her down, but I haven't seen it. She's the she, divorce lawyer. <laughs> she's the divorce lawyer in the marriage story, and she is no holes barred. She is a son of a gun. She's funny. I, I don't, she's unforgiving. She's relentless. She's a trial attorney type. How do you describe her? But she's she's a pit bull. She's a pit bull. A pit bull. She's a pit bull. And she won mm -hmm. the Golden Globe. I expect her to win Best Actress. Um, best Song? Anybody for Song? I think, I think it's going go to John. Yeah, it's going to go to Rocket Man, Elton John. Yeah, so uh, Elton John's going to perform. Again. Yeah, I know. yeah, Elton John's going to perform. Uh, Randy Newman is going to perform his uh, Toy Story song. It, he's been fun fact nominated twenty two times. Randy Newman. Yeah, that's wow. crazy. That's wow. the, the guy who sang Short People. Yes, <laughs> but all these great uh, things. Of course, uh, you've got a friend in me from the original uh -huh. Toy Love Story. It. But uh, Randy Newman's going to perform. Adina Menzel is going to perform. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, awesome. into the Unknown from Frozen 2. See, there were too. too many good songs. Yeah. I know, I saw that. I was between and, that and speaking the one of song, from Frozen and Best Score, the whole oh, man. the whole program. I loved um, the score in The Joker. When it was weird, it was creepy, it was dark. That's yes. my vote. Yeah, for Anybody best, else best for score. score. I put 1917, I think. Uh, and I Strong think, too. That's really that'll strong. Be strong. But I'm um, only Have you all cast your ballots cuz we're going to keep score and then when it's when it's after next week, we're going to come back and see who really who really I didn't pick a documentary though, because that is. That's okay, so heavens. you don't get those points. Oh, I, don't let, me guess. I, let me guess. I honestly went and like watched on YouTube and then guessed from there. Documentary. I liked the cave. Did you see the cave? I didn't see the cave. I, I I wasn't sure whether to pick it. that. I I actually picked the one from uh, Syria. It's an it's about it's an anti. Bashir Assad kind of thing, and uh, well, the cave and is went, in Syria as yeah, well. Yeah, and so um, I went for that one. It's called For Sama, uh, for uh, F O R, and then Sama. Uh, but uh, yeah, I didn't get to see the cave. So the Oscars are in a few days. Yes, and then after that, uh -huh. we'll know what's what's won, and then we'll have to have the assignments of going and seeing all of the winners, mm -hmm. and then we'll get yes. to see who picked the most winners.
Yeah. Um, and, and it's exciting. This is like a sport to me. Well, and what's really fun is we mentioned, you know, like Elton John's going to perform and Adina Menzel, Randy Newman. Uh, those of you who watch This Is Us on TV, do you yes. watch This Is Us? And you know who Chrissy Metz is? Yes. Yes. Mm. Chrissy, Chrissy Metz is going to perform. Gonna Yay. And then Yay. Cynthia and Revo, she's going to perform from uh, Harriet and she's going for the oh. EGOT. If she wins the now, her Oscar song is nominated. For, either, for song or for uh, Best Actress, she's nominated for Best Actress for Harriet then she would join people like John Legend uh, for that. And also, now, she's not nominated, but Billie Eilish. Yeah. Yes, I heard and she's And, of course, the I love her. DCC performed. Uh, to, they had we some sure of the stuff with her. Um, it's probably the uh, James Bond song. So she's, it is. she's doing that. Gonna so that's going to be Bond. amazing. Okay, well, that little okay. sound on my phone means it's time. We're out of time. And this was our first ever Just for Kicks. Christy, thank you for hey, joining thanks. us. thanks. Yeah, thank enjoy you. the Oscars. Thanks Haley for having me. Haley and Judy, this was fun. It Want was to do much? it again? Let's do it again sure. next week. <laughs> okay. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?